relatively warm right now and if it keeps going it will get hot. Greetings! I'm getting quite a bit of interest on one of my videos and no wonder it was the video about this contraption here, the high voltage generator where I was able to demonstrate a little Jacob's Ladder. The device itself was quite short lived, the poor quality transformer that came in the cheap little kit from eBay yeah didn't last today I'm going to share the schematic for this so I'll draw up a schematic of how all of this is connected I will attempt to show you how to get a transformer like this possibly even better so this is a much bigger transformer much more powerful it seems and this came out out of a LCD TV that someone disposed of and there was two transformers like this on the driver board for the backlight yeah if I took the board home I figured this would be a really good transformer to experiment with high voltage generator first of all it's bigger physically it's a, it's a larger size and second of all it's got very beefy primary coil and two secondary coils we can put those in series to even increase the voltage that we're gonna get out of this the only drawback with transformer like this, it hasn't got a feedback winding. There's only one primary side and two high voltage. But we need one more low voltage feedback winding to drive this um, circuit. That's what the circuit requires. So today we'll be making our own secondary winding on this. And then attempt to get this to work. If it works, fantastic. If not, well, someone will tell me why it didn't. And here is the schematic. Yeah, I've drawn it up from this... Uh, model that I've built last time it's exactly like this what we have over here um, DC 12 volt coming in a switch an electrolyte cap that's just for a reservoir because this draws current in a very impulse driven way so the voltage stays stable and the whole oscillation that doesn't get affected then we've got three windings on a ferrite core we've got the feedback the primary and the secondary high voltage winding it's worth noting high voltage winding is not connected to anything on the primary side it's entirely separate to everything and then we've got a transistor this is a NPN transistor you can look up a data sheet for it if you wanted to but yeah this transistor is not critical any power NPN transistor will do in this configuration now the original circuit didn't have any of this so the capacitor and those two extra resistors it was just a resistor going into the winding over here and again it's worth noting that those windings are backwards so they're not wound up the same way one is wound up one way one is one goes the other way this section of the circuit here i've added it through experimentation with the kit that i've assembled uh, last time and I've noticed that first of all those resistors were getting really hot that's why I've put uh, a few high power resistors the ones I've got over here are marked 8W which would suggest 8 watts but they don't look like 8 watts uh, they look more like 1 watt maybe 3 watt resistors at most those resistors here that were getting hot so that's why I was looking for a high power resistors and I didn't have the right value I was looking for something in the range of five six hundred ohms so this is what I found and I had to put in three in series effectively but I've noticed um, also through experimentation that adding a small capacitor five uh, five point six nano was having a positive effect on the way the transistor switches the arc was a lot more stable was able to start by itself on a larger distance so I left it with this capacitor in here the way the circuit works what I think is um, once the power gets applied transistor gets switched on through the feedback winding and starts drawing pretty much all the current it can through the primary coil which in effect saturates the transformer core and when it reaches the saturation point the field collapses the feedback coil creates negative voltage basically shuts off the transistor immediately uh, because on the base um, the base potential gets z below zero volts and when that happens sharp drop of current going through the primary coil induces very high voltage on the secondary winding and when everything stabilizes the cycle starts again the transistor slowly opens up starts conducting then the field collapses the coil generates negative voltage shuts of the transistor and so on and so forth 
This transformer here is a little bit different from the one supplied in the Chinese kit. First of all, we've got two secondary high voltage windings, which will be helpful because if I bridge them in series, we will get double the voltage out of it. It has got only one low voltage winding, one primary side. You can see it's wound up from a lots of uh, thin strands that form basically one thicker strand. We will need to add more or less the same amount of turns of a feedback winding onto this uh, for the whole thing to work. Here we have a common mode choke, a part that's present in quite a lot of devices. I've built previously a dual tip using those. Today we're going to take it apart and use the wire to make the feedback winding onto here. So we have to take it apart somewhat gently as to not to damage the power or the wire that we want to take out of it. That goes my gentle. Now, interesting. So how they do it, this is uh, unusual. I didn't think that was the case. So I'm not sure if you can see, I'll bring it closer. This has got a um, gear on it and it is free to rotate, I assume. Yes, it is. So they actually make the ferrite cord first, then they put two pieces of plastic and glue it together to form the former for the coils. And then it goes into some sort of jig and it gets propelled by this gear. And that's how the coil gets wound up on here. Okay, that's unusual. But uh, yeah, we can leave it at this. If I find the beginning of the winding, there we go. I should be able to unwind this now all the way. Now I have to unwind it all the way because I won't be able to thread it onto the other transformer then. But that's one, one section should be enough. I'm seeing it's plenty of wire. So now all that's left is to wind it up. Looking at this, I'm estimating, looking at the thickness, I've got one, two, three, four, five, and there could be two or three layers, so maybe 10 turns across and two to three layers deep, so between 20 and 30 turns. So I'll see how far I get with this wire, um, but I'll, I'll be aiming at probably 30 turns um, on here. And I also can see what is the order. So th this is being turned in this direction. So I'm going to do it the same way, uh, just so I know what's happening. And then I'll be able to connect one or the other pin um, according to how I want it connected. So first of all, I want to add a little bit of isolation because the Captain tape on here is quite deteriorated. I'm sure it would be fine because the wire is enameled anyways. But since I make and make it prettier and add some bright yellow electrical tape as a warning sign, that could be nice. Okay, that's done. And I know the primary winding goes this way, this direction. So I need to start winding. Basically, I'll leave myself a good section here. Just get it wound up on here so it stays put. And now what I have to do, this is the fun part. Um, I have to thread all this wire in about 30 times around in the circle like so. Because there, because there is no other way of doing it. Okay, I've got about 25-30 turns of the wire here. And I was, um, initially I thought I will connect it to those pins. Because then those pins are not connected to anything just yet. But that would means I'll be too close to the high voltage side so I've changed my mind so I'm going to mark this black and I'm going to mark the wire black there we go and I've also marked my thumb black so I know this is the thumb for this hand but now to prevent the wire from unspooling I can twist it together so now we can connect this instead of this and see if we can get some sparks going. And here it is. Let's apply some power and see will this oscillate. 
Oops, I've connected the, the two coils, the common point, uh, to the negative. Silly me. That was supposed to go to the positive. Okay, let's try again. So, power on. Okay, it's making a noise. That's more like the last time, so... Let's try to get it somewhat closer. Oh, we've got Jacob's Ladder again. Here is a slightly better shot. So, power on. It's mesmerizing to look at. Here I have adjusted the electrodes a little bit, so hopefully it will get a little bit more movement. The transistor is not too hot. The resistors are warm-ish, and it's actually clamping it down to one amp so let's increase the current limit let's give it three amps maximum so that will that should disable current limiting i've increased the voltage over here to was it 13 volts and There we go, we've got some reasonably active Jacob's Ladder action. Now this is running at 17 volts, drawing 1.5 amp. I guess I could experiment with adding a few more cups here and there and see what would happen, but maybe not for today. Next time. So I hope you enjoyed this little experimentation fix hack of a, a transformer into a little high voltage Jacob's ladder. Here is another shot. So this, uh, yeah, it takes a lot of adjusting to get the wires completely straight. But once you do, it starts walking all the way up the ladder. That's all for this video, so thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and please do subscribe for more random electronics related stuff, and anything else that I will feel like doing. For this video that's it, so take care.